Welcome back, everybody, to The Elder King, starring Baroness Claudia of Draco. No gods, no kings, just this random lady and politics, which I know ev is everybody's favourite thing to do. So I've had some advice since last episode. First things first, I've been told to keep the Elder Council, even if we're not a member of the Elder Council, basically on side as much as possible. Particularly, I'm thinking this guy, uh, seeing as he is the, the current Emperor's father-in-law. He's also our... Not direct liege, but the liege above our liege. So maybe swaying him would be a good idea. Not only that, he is the head of the outer council as well. He's arguably, besides the emperor himself, maybe even more so than the emperor, the most powerful character in in Cyrodiil right now, the most powerful man in the realm. So keeping him on side is a good idea. But I've, I've been told that specifically keeping these guys on side can. Basically, set yourself up for some nice levels of corruption. For example, they might happen to want to send a little bit of the Imperial Treasury over to over to our provinces, for example, if they like us quite a lot. So that seems like a very good way. A little bit of sickening nepotism there to get a leg up in the world. Never hurt anybody. I love that the Emperor, by the way, is on the Elder Council and he's like one of the lowest ranks. Wait, he is the lowest rank. He is literally joint last place with this random lady, Countess Nisha, um, down in Leowin. Wow, okay, interesting. Right, so I've also been told as well, this was a big bit of feedback I got from last episode, to very much keep a close eye on, we can't do it right now because I think I clicked it last episode and, and then clicked off it again, but the bureaucracy, when that's available to us, to basically do it as much as possible to whatever suits our playstyle at the time. There are things like levy boosts in exchange for levy reinforcement rate, or there are things like uh, general opinion boosts in exchange for gold, or you know build cost reductions in exchange for military power, some, some garbage like that basically. But depending on our playstyle, that could obviously be very helpful because right now we're not a war, so Maybe we'd like that build cost reduction rather than having a much bigger army because right now, not going to be relevant. At least not until we find some claims or find a way to expand it into the other provinces here. Um, there's a lot of other stuff to do as well. So obviously we can study a specialization, which I completely forgot to do last episode, with the Fighters Guild. So what do we want to go for? I don't really know the end game of a lot of these. So I'm going to open up the Character Finder 2 and we can sort of take a look at what we want to specialize in here. I'm going to take a look first and foremost at the Assassin, because that sounds like it could be the character we were trying to build last time before he died horribly. Aurelio uh, Diggers, D Dickers Bickers Julius. What does the Assassin do? So let's take a look here. Journeyman Assassin does give martial intrigue, and that's exactly what we were trying to do with Aurelio. What I actually want to see is if the highest levels of Assassin perhaps give us bonuses to, I don't know, assassination power, something like that. It really doesn't, which strikes me as kind of odd that you wouldn't get a plot power increase from being a trained assassin, but I guess, you know, plotting is inviting other people to do the data work for you rather than you doing it yourself, I guess. Right, we've got Barbarian up next. I'm not going to go through every single one, or at least I will edit that out if I do choose to do that. I just want to get a good idea because I, I vaguely know what some do, but not all of them. So I briefly had a look through most of the specializations here, and to be honest with you, I think in uh, limited to what we are, which is to say only the ones that are sort of more fighter-based, because of course we're part of the Fighters Guild, the Wayfarer seems like it would be the most immediately useful, but I don't really want to go for Wayfarer um, if, if just because it's the best of a bad situation. I think it might actually be more valuable at this stage instead to leave the Fighters Guild and join the Mercantile Guild instead. Just because the specializations that guild gives us would, would fit our playstyle a little bit more, especially when we're forced to play tall. So I'm going to say, piss off Fighters Guild. We've got to wait another 90 days before we can join another one. Uh, we'll say I'm not focused on any specializations right now. We'll blitz through the next 90 days or so, and then rejoin the other one and see what that one can offer us instead. Oh, turns out actually we can't even join the Mercantile Guild now that I look at it, because we've only got five stewardship and you need ten to join. Wow, we're really that shitty, huh? Um, we could join the Cult of the Ancestor Moths. Those might offer us different specializations again. Let's try it. Let's at least get a good idea. We might as well check what everything does before we commit to something. Um, can you not even pick a specialization as these guys? Oh, that would suck. Uh, let's try that again. Maybe we just had to reset when we've joined and left a guild. Nope, I don't think we can even study a specialization with the Ancestor Moth, can we? I think study of specialization is, is actually a power added by the guild itself, right? So if we go back to the Fighters Guild, yeah, there you go. Study of specialization. Shit. Okay. Um, goodbye, Ancestor Moths. You do nothing useful at all. So unless we really want the same religion as opinion, which could be good. Don't get me wrong. Um, that does seem like it would be very, very good if you were like the Emperor or something. Just to plus 10 opinion with everybody of your religion in your realm is fantastic. But for the time being, I think we will go back to the Fighters Guild, just because not only does it give us the build cost modifier, which you could argue is useful for playing tall. Um, well, I mean, you can't even argue with that. It just is. But, you know, some of those specializations actually weren't too bad. I would have preferred, you know, a whatever else there is. One, one of the more realm-focused ones, one of the stewardship-based ones. But that's okay. It's not a big deal. Well, apparently our court chaplain was smuggling, uh, what, what is it, when they, when they steal gold from the treasury or something like that? So we're going to have to, was that the magister? Yeah, that's it. Okay, um, 
you'll do instead. You're actually pretty decent. That's essentially just someone who can... Is it this mod where they could do magic on your behalf, or is that Geheimer Snack? I can never remember. Uh, mainly because we only ever play as mages in this mod, or at least we have so far, so it's never really been necessary. Um, I'll take the 100 and look at that. Debasing the mints without even having to try. Right, so what is it we needed for the city again? Because I think building a city early on would be kind of fantastic. Um, it's 586 gold. That's not a huge amount, to be fair. We're already essentially a uh, third of the way there right now. Perhaps it's time I ask King Abner to spend some time with me, please. For the love of God, spend some time with King Abner. Let's see if we can't sway him. Chased or Wrath. Um, I mean, he's already got minus one opinion of us. It doesn't really matter either way for the time being, but I'm just seeing what our traits are like compared to his. Ah, shit. Well, we can deal with the trolls directly. Thank God we actually joined the fight skills. I suppose that is a good reason to... Uh, to stick with it is so that we can get rid of those modifiers that you get for being in debt or something like that. Oh, we have runes. Was that Alien runes in in Var Vartachin? What is this one in Oblivion? I'm trying to think back. I haven't played Oblivion in quite a while. Um, the runes are pretty decent, in my opinion. So the Alien runes, you develop them, you get, you get what is it, like tax out of it. But then you also get on a sort of um, every few year basis, you get a random artifact from the runes, which could be, you know, sword, armor. Could be something quite high value. It could be something low value, or it can sometimes just straight up be gold. So they do pay for themselves, and I think the earlier we build them, the better. I'm actually going to develop the runes. 200 gold, we get tax modifier, siege defense, and some tech points as well. Yeah, absolutely, I'll take that one. What? You shit! We got pneumonia! Oh my god, so that event only just popped up. It was the one uh, where, where, you know, when you're working on a book, and then it'll say, oh, I could do this all night, maybe I should. 80% chance of developing something. We got hit by pneumonia. The doctor wasn't even able to cure us before it killed us. Oh my god. Oh, it's minus four. Shit, I only thought it was like a minus two normally. Well, never mind then. Um, if we get a pop-up now saying, oh, the spell of cure disease works or whatever. Nope. My god. That's a character per episode we're averaging right now. And now we're playing as a sickly boy. Bearing in mind our only other character that's part of our dynasty before we get a game over would be this random girl here. Um, Magiana D Dickus Biggest Julius, who is a dribbling imbecile. Jesus, minus eight to everything. What an absolute dribble chin. We're not, we're not playing as that character. I refuse. It's not happening. I actually sent out a load of requests just to, as she fell ill to invite a bunch of people to court. I don't know if they will. Ah, nice. To Baron Augustus of Draytler, the Outer Council requests that I travel immediately to Chadenhold to oversee the development of infrastructure in your holdings. Yes. The Outer Council's help is welcomed. Thank you. Um, we can also provide some efforts as well. So it's currently 25. So we can give him another 25 gold on top of that. Sure, or we can embezzle from it. Um, what does that actually do? So we lower the councillor's budget. I think up upgrading our realm seems useful. In fact, I'm going to give him some extra money for it as well. There you go, my friend. Okay. Someone has stolen our mother's head from her grave. Good God. Okay, St stressed or depressed as a child, please don't. My God, we've got enough going for us. We could drop down at any second. We don't need anything else. Oh, he's failed. For fuck's sake. Well, now we've got no money. We've got no health. Successful treatment. Well, thank you. That's something, I guess. Nice. Okay, that's not too bad. Nana says I'm not sick anymore. I can run. Fantastic. So, I'm actually having this woman here educate us, uh, Rhea, mainly because she's a holy warrior, an organizer, a battlefield terrain master, blah, 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 blah. She's not, in terms of her actual traits, she's garbage. She's proud and gluttonous, but she does have that legendary warrior, which I would love to actually get for ourselves. Obviously, post, uh, post conclave, it's, it's a percentage based instead. Um, can we potentially find someone with. Legendary. Is there even anyone else who's a legendary warrior that would be willing to join us? Um, I'll actually type in the trait here. Legendary warrior. Okay. Um, Diplo range. Yes. That's it. There's three characters who are legendary warriors in the whole world, and we've got one of them. Another one is a prisoner in the cult of where? The cult of Meridia. Okay. So we could try and bust this 3,000 year old immortal elf out of prison. Probably not going to. Oh, it's an alien. Weird. Um, is that like a, a historical character or something? Because that seems very specific. Um, and they have a bloodline. Oh, Last King of the Aliens. Right. Uh, yeah, I remember that quest for that guy. What was his name? Umbakano. That was it. From Oblivion. Of course, with um, Joel Ring, his, his Nord man. All right. High King Joel and the Skull as well. Gonna, gonna get a feeling I could ask this guy to educate us. Probably gonna say no. Yeah, we can't even ask him. All right. Fuck you then. I think we'll stick with what we've got and just pray that we end up at least semi-decent. Alright, I've invited those people for the second time here, and I'm going to put them on the council just so that we can at least do something in the background while we are just essentially waiting to grow. Um, I mean, she's... I kind of don't want to piss this person off by sacking her from the council. She's already in a good place. Right, let's get you studying technology from the Imperial City. That's another good idea. Let's conspire against the Emperor. Magister is garbage. Man, have we got no one better with, with higher learning stats that we could potentially employ? Um... Nope, 12 is the highest. Good god, okay, that's insane. What can we have the Magister doing that's useful? 
Researching cultural tech? Oh, man. Performing charity. Vassal impressed. Magister is trampled by mob. Um, we don't have any vassals, so that's the only reason I normally do that. I guess we'll just stick him hunting an apostate thing, because that'll give us the most piety, right? Um, it absolutely will. What about proselytize? Any? Nope. Okay, we'll sit with hunter apostates then. Fingers crossed this will give us something. Why not also research military tech in the very, very low chance we get a military theory? You can improve Diplo relations with... No. With Trade and Hull is what I wanted to do. Okay, well, I'll move over to Trade and Hull in a minute. Like I said, this guy, most powerful man in the council by far. Oh, apparently it already worked. Fantastic. Oh, is that his as well? Well, that was a blessing in disguise. Now would be a real good time in hindsight. I mean, it's 11% chance yearly to get a claim on somewhere. Let's start actually fabricating claims, because by the time he's actually a playable character, because let's be honest, right now we could do shit all. When he's a playable character, we might actually have a couple of claims in the back and be able to push them and become a duke immediately. That'd be fantastic, particularly if we keep buttering up, to, like, keep buttering up Abner here as well. I'm playing outside with Tertia, and we're close to an abandoned haunted house. Do we want Willful? I mean, Willful is pretty decent, isn't it? And it is kind of necessary for the, uh... I gotta think. Willful is the good one. Yeah, Ambitious, Brave, Stubborn, or Uncouth. Rowdy is the garbage one. That becomes, well... I mean, it's not that bad. It obviously becomes dull, which is shitty. But you can also get Brawny out of it as well, which is pretty decent. Yeah, let's do it. Let's gain Willful, because that does also contribute decently. Oh, or not. Thank you. All right. I was gonna say that will contribute decently to our education, but... Game's gonna keep throwing these ones for us. Oh, wow. I was looking forward to another day of tormenting Brenemir with name-calling and kicks when he came up to me and gave me a sweet meat. Ah, thank you, Brenemir, for your sweet meat. Thank you. Gain two diplomacy. Um, what's the opposite? We throw the sweet meat away and kick his butt. We become bitter rivals. Uh, and we'll always be his rival. Now, I, I don't see any reason to do that ever, so I guess I'll just take the free two diplomacy instead. Playful. Does playful work with a martial education? I don't remember, but it does become gregarious. So if all else fails, we might be, end up being a good diplomat. Um, I need to check. Let me let me go and have a look what actually contributes to a good martial education. So we only want Rowdy and Willful. Idolizer and Timid are both garbage, but those are... I mean, I knew those were garbage anyway, so I guess we'll just take Playful. There's no downside to that one too much. Like, Gregarious, Deceitful, rarely Lunatic. I mean, only Slovenly, in my opinion, is the bad one there. So, he is so fast. What a fast man. Oh my god, the Daggerfall Covenant. Oh, I don't actually know what this means at all. King Emmerich of Wayrest, the leader of the Daggerfall Covenant, is dead, and so is his biggest achievement. The Breton Lords are no longer to find a successor they would all support, and thus the Daggerfall Covenant is disbanded. So Daggerfall just goes back to yeah, basically warring kings instead rather than one big old king there. Sure, Bretons just can't get along with one another. Is that the beginning of the end? So when is the invasion with Molag Bal? I think it's actually supposed to have happened already, right? Uh, it's supposed to be when this emperor dies. Someone explained in the last episode. This guy dies. He, the, the, his wife or something like that takes over. Oh, she's gone now. Whoever it is. Oh, no, it wasn't this guy. It was the guy before him. It's supposed to die. Varen the Bulwark was installed by Faction Man. Okay, they've completely managed to avoid the Molag Bell crisis in that case. So he's supposed to die or abdicate. The the the, the, the woman Than is supposed to take over. She's supposed to be tricked into lighting the dragon fires, and that's what weakens the barrier. And then and then Molag Bell and Manny Marco can come and do their tricks. But I guess that's not going to be a problem this time around. I do kind of like the idea of a stable Cyrodiil where we could do a bit more political plays, though, rather than uh, rather than magic daedric gods for the, yet another series. We're already twelve and got basically nothing out of that entire education. Jesus. Okay, we'll go for Marsh then. I mean, the intrigue would be obviously the best one to go for here, but. I still think Marshall is the right way forward. Obviously, we've also got the Bloodline and the Companions and all that shit as well. So, we get the Marshall bonuses to that. Man, um, not exactly the greatest start. But I do kind of like that we have at least kind of got a clean slate here. You know, we're starting with this complete fresh character. Everything we do from now on isn't really tainted by a pre-existing family or characters. Well, we're a garbage character. But at least we've actually finally got a clean one. Is that the Barony of... So, a Barony in this situation is a county... Uh, absolutely, we're going to take that for 13 gold. And then we are going to move you over to... So that is... Uh, we want to take the Duchy of Cropsford, don't we? So we'll move... And he actually has all of those? Uh, no, he doesn't. Okay, he's actually only got that one as well. Is there a Duke of Cropsford? Is that is that what he is? Yeah, okay, he is. Right, so we'll grab that one. And then we'll also grab... I mean, we can usurp it if we just grab those ones. Uh, we could also get that one as well, seeing as he owns all three. And then we can push all three claims at once and just completely get rid of this dude. It would suck to be him, but that would give us five counties. Gives us a way to the ocean, which means we can actually go off raiding and start to earn some money and, and that type of thing. Good. I'm fine with this. This is Even if our character is garbage, the realm is, is improving. My steward Vigdis has collected a special tithe in, in Draco. How much do you think this will be? If you said six fucking gold, you were right. Oh, sorry. I guess almost seven gold there. I'm bear with. 
Good God. I mean, in hindsight, it probably would have been better to actually play uh, maybe a border with Kovac, Anvil, anywhere in around sort of Rimen or elsewhere so that we could actually go raiding because we can raid neighbors for loot. I, I mean, we can't raid other Imperials because they probably wouldn't be best pleased about that. I mean, especially as we're also in the same realm, so you just can't do that full stop. It is a little bit of a pain in the ass. Um... I mean, we could... Oh, there's Bruma as well. There are a lot of better places to start, but I, I wanted to go small. You know, I wanted to build our way up so it was a much bigger victory when we actually become Emperor, which we're definitely going to be, he says, with his... Oh, to, oh, we got Gregarious. Hey, we're a Gregarious... Oh, God, and now our regent is smug, fucking smuggling from us, embezzling from us. This couldn't get any worse. I wake up in the middle of the night, my heart racing, and my whole body's feeling strange. What was I dreaming about? The farmer boy I met earlier, Clover... Kissing me, or I should try and get some sleep. Who is she? She's a courtier. She has a smooth voice. Fine. You know what? We'll do that one. And then there is 11% chance we gain bisexual. Or we say, I save myself for her. Um, it's still 11% chance. Or oh, Chase. No, no, no. We want Lustful. Give me that shit. Yeah, I'll take that one. Boom. All right. That seems good. That seems like we can actually, you know, start getting some dynasty members now for once. We're almost done with our education. That's with no time at all. Credit to the, the new version of the Elder Kings. Runs really fucking well. I mean, this is like smooth as butter, huh? You are an incredible person, Hoki. They just grabbed Hoki and Tor. Uh, thank you. I will take that. Oh my god, she's a prodigy. That's probably why she's so good, huh? Right, and then it's just, uh, Magia. And we can actually dethrone this poor guy. My god, just minding his own business. And this child warlord turns up and takes it all. You poor fool. Wait, who's she? Oh, it's like his daughter or something. Yeah, he died and now, yeah, okay, that's fine. I thought that it was the, the whoever, whoever the duke of this was had taken it all. Now, let's find out whether or not we are shit. We are shit. <laughs> But we do have an awesome beard. Wow. Baron Augustus of Draclo. Not too terrible. Honestly, he could have ended up so much worse. 13 martial, 10 diplomacy isn't nearly as bad. I am putting him down. Um, we could show our bravery on the battlefield. That's actually not too terrible. Game one martial, of course. I think we'll just join the Fighters Guild to start off with here and, and, and really start training ourselves up a little bit. Oh my god, we can actually join the Scenerist Guild. But no, we have claims to be oppressed. And that will be oppressed as in I'm going to... Not oppressed, although we might get around to that at some stage as well. It is one of my campaigns after all. Marshall plus three, I'll take that one. That takes up to a whopping 16 Marshall. I, I say that kind of as a joke, but that's not too terrible, is it, huh? Right, let's groom an heir, and let's get married, and hopefully, maybe start getting some good traits in the family and not die at the age of... I mean, what did our mother die at? Our mother died at the age of 28. Her father died at the age of 46. We're a very short-lived family. Right, Prodigy. Let's see who we can find here who might want to come and marry our boy. Um, okay, so we're looking for preferably a human. Hroki, our chancellor, is already here. She is 31. Um, I mean, he did dream about her when he was a boy. Oh, no, that wasn't her. Ah, you're close enough. I'm going to do it. I, th I think I'm actually going to do it. We're going to lose some prestige out of it. We're still going to stay in the positive, though, and, of course, we can get another 13 prestige there. She is Prodigy, so I'm going to I'm gonna take that for the time being, and then, you know, maybe when she gets a little bit old, we could swap her out for someone else. You know how it is. It's just medieval things. So I think we get Prodigy and try and go for a Prodigy daughter. That way we can, you know, if we get a Prodigy daughter, try and marry for a bloodline and then marry back to Prodigy or, you know, depending on how it goes here. I would kind of like to do the whole bloodline game. I think that'd be very cool. And there are obviously a lot of legendary bloodlines and historic and mythological bloodlines uh, kicking around in the Elder Scrolls universe. So farming those up is a pretty good idea. Emperor Cyrenin of the Cyrodelic Empire has vetoed the proceedings of the Outer Council, inducting Reynold Delin into the Outer Council. Has the Emperor overstepped his boundaries? I don't really know what that's trying to tell us besides the fact that the Empire is potentially becoming unstable. Maybe the Emperor might have some threats kicking around, that type of thing. Might be inciting rebellions or, or inciting rebellions against him eventually. What wonders can we build? Just a ruler statue. I mean, it's better than nothing. And I, I do like the fact they've started to add the Great Wonders. I think that's a really nice little feature there. To the vivacious Baron Augustus, well met. I would like to give you this seat on my council as a marshal. Boom. Thank you very much, my friend. I will absolutely take the ability to become your marshal. Anything to level up our man a bit more. Uh, you want me to vote with you for a favor? What are we voting for? Excuse me. What are we What are we voting for right now, uh, Skinnier? Um, I don't actually know how you find this out. Oh, probably we haven't got a vote yet, right? Because it would normally say here. Um, who are you? Lord Mayor Ilias of Harlan. I mean, he is an imbecile. Is that, that's the minus 8 to everything. He's still got... Jesus. The man's still got 12 stewardship. Nah, you know what? We're not going to get mired in politics too much. We just want to build up our own round for the time being. Don't do it. 
I see that weapon of yours, sellsword, huh? Never should have come here. The wing ringleader and the thugs. Don't say ringleader. And his thugs charge at me and I ready myself for battle. Die, scum. Uh, there's a 1% chance we die, a 9% chance we become maimed with fully injured, 30% chance we get wounded. Come on. Please do not die. I beg of you. Okay. Not great. Not the best outcome. I, I would say, as far as things go, actually not a problem at all. Maimed and wounded, would, um, I mean, maimed would have been terrible. Wounded, it really isn't that big a deal at all. It's, it's effectively nothing there. That could have been really, really bad then for a second. If we'd have died again, I think I would have probably just quit. Why is our sister in prison? Um, she put us by High Chief Utkane of Hangzhen. Oh, is that Reachman? Yeah, okay. Goodbye, sister. Nice knowing you. You're getting your heart pulled out. 33% chance our wife gains vain. Uh, we gain charitable, though, which isn't too terrible. Stewardship minus one, general opinion plus three. Yeah, I could take that. Vassal opinion plus five as well. Um, this is my money you're talking about. Gain... National Tax Modifier was Zealous. Zealous gives Marshall. It's only 33% chance, but I would kind of like that. Come on, come on, please. We just need something here. We actually got it. Nice. Okay, 17 Marshall. I will absolutely take. That's a pretty great start. Obviously, Wounded has, has knocked ourselves down a little bit there. And we're studying strategy. Oh, this guy could be the Warlord we've been looking for. Hmm. 80 gold in exchange for a favor. We're going to try and break away from this dude anyway, so I'm absolutely going to take that. The guilt is burning through me. Every second is pure agony mixed with shame. I've never felt so guilty, so sinful. What have we done, Ron? Oh, because we're like lustful and zealous, baby. Um, we could get one year of fasting with Marshall minus three. I'm just going to give him the eight gold. That's fine. Oh, nice. Direct leader is fantastic. I can't imagine we're going to get many better marshals than us, so I think I'll take that one for the time being. So the Elder Scrolls system, the Elder King system, has a, has a really great way of leveling up your leadership traits. Kind of what we've seen in the Orders of Chivalry mod in the base game as well, but I really do like this idea. Um... Yeah, direct lead at level 1. I'll take that one. Or, I mean, some of these could be very, very good at the high levels. Fuck it. We're going to take that one. I, I'm not, I was kind of tempted by Flanker as well because we're good, but we're not fantastic. But give it some time. This, this guy's only 17. There we go. All right. Our wife, Roki, is pregnant. Please, I just need that prodigy, son. Oh, shit. We can be a horse rider. What does that do? Marshall was... Oh, that's so good. Wow. Fighting on horseback is completely different than fighting on foot. I think I've found my calling. So he's an incredibly good knight. Look at that, we're up to 19 Marshall already. In the Spear Cook Chucky competition, we got 50 prestige. Thank you. So we've actually almost cancelled out. Oh, and another 100. Shit, okay, cool. And why don't we become close friends with this guy and get a training partner there? War focus, kind of a good idea. Um, oh, man, getting diligent. Come on, do it. This is good. This has been really, really good. We have stepped this guy up so far in such a small amount of time. He's still only 17. We're getting so many events firing on this guy here. Um, wife, you need some familiar faces around her. Absolutely. Um, yeah, prestige, favor, health plus 0 0.75. I'll take that one. <gasps> Duh, baby time. Uh, you have an heir. You will now play as Agrippa. I like the name Agrippa already. Agrippa, biggest dick as Julius. Come on, have prodigy. <sighs> yes, we've fucking done it already. Oh, that's some good shit right there. Okay. Um, <laughs> oh, this is so good. Agrippa, you are going to be called Nepos. A great name, the founder of our dynasty. We've, in the short space of, like, an episode, got Prodigy with a bloodline in no time at all. This kid is going to be good. Welcome into the world, young Nepos. You will be trained, of course, in struggle. You will follow in your father's footsteps. Your father's already becoming a pretty great leader himself. So he will educate you, young Nepos. Um, or we could chuck him into rear again. But she, she, her actual traits aren't fantastic. We've got Diligent and Zealous now, so I'd rather pass those ones on. Plus, Diligent gives a bonus to his education anyway. This could be so good. That's actually nuts. Bear in mind, the chance of inherited prodigy is literally like 5-10%, something like that. Genius is 15%, so it's lower than that. We got so fucking lucky there. Ah, oh, Hroki, you have, you have done a good job. And that was me thinking, ah, oh, maybe we shouldn't marry her. What a mistake that would have been, huh? Nepos, Diggus, Bickers, Julius. Welcome. And right on cue, our final claim. Look at that. 17.5 gold. Not really putting a dent in our massive stop pile of money right now. Maybe I should have gone taxes. What did we end up upgrading? Oh, it's the Ruin, right? I mean, don't get me wrong. The Ruin's still a great thing to have upgraded. Um, hmm. Maybe we should start going into tax a little bit more. Levy reinforcement rate plus 10%, though, is pretty fantastic. Um, again, I would love to save it for a city, but maybe going for some earlier taxes before we get up to that stage, because that's going to be, what, 500 gold or something crazy like that? 586. Ah, it's not that far off, though, is it? Especially if, or it's just a base in the mint for a few years. Okay. Anyway. Let's not get distracted here. We've got 1,500 men from two counties. The Duke that I'm planning on going to war against, 556. Why can't we declare war on her yet? Um, must be our liege or a vassal of our liege. Oh, shit. We've got to get independence first. Right. Okay. Um, 
You're our... You're our lage? What, with a hundred... One thousand... Huh. Oh, so we've got this in the bag is what you're telling me. Okay, fair enough. So we get independence. We... Oh, wait, he's got Nepos... Why has he got... Oh, right, because we're a counsellor. So we're in his capital, and our son is training with us in his capital. So we're going to have to resign from his council to start off with here. Um, goodbye, my friend. Are our levies fully reinforced? They are, sure. So we're actually not going to get any stronger than this. We've got money in the bank, so if we do need time mercenaries for whatever reason, we potentially could. Let's fucking do it. Let's, let's do it. Let's get independence. This is fantastic. And then we can really start building up the realm as quickly as possible. We've got some incredible commanders, don't forget. We've got, like, literally one of the only legendary commanders actually in the world right now. I'm going to sack her. And give it to... Let's give it to Lodi instead. You train the troops just for the the reinforced rate or whatever else we're looking for there. Then we'll give her a... Uh, let's go minor titles here. Commander. She's just better. 22 is fucking insane. And then we'll put Horik on there as well. Cool. So... I think we do want to do that, don't we? Um... We've got direct leader, which gives leading the center bonuses. She's got light foot bonuses. Rough terrain. Does this count as rough terrain? Uh, it's not quite mountains, though, is it? No, it's forest. Okay, cool. Um, what else has she got going for her there? Battlefield terrain master organizer gives movement speed as well, especially with movement lock. This could be good. I think we we'll go rear on that one. And then what about you then? You've got. Oh, but she's got. Oh, man, I thought it was flanking them for a second. Ignore me. Trickster and aggressive leader. 2022. We have no third unit. And then we're actually on the sub command there, which is pretty fantastic as well. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna roll with this. Let's get him, boss. We've we've already got this in the back. Look, going in up like those guys having zero morale is, is definitely gonna help out a lot. Good luck. Okay. Nice. First battle immediately gone. This is a fantastic start. Send the speed down a little bit. I forgot just quite how well this mod ran then. So that not that we could have influenced it at all, of course. Okay, um, let's take this army out. They have very little morale. I'd rather take these ones out first. We are gonna try and duel. Crastisius, please don't die. Are you kidding me? Are you absolutely joking? Um, take Horik instead. I'll help you. 50% chance of being known as the traitor. This is how it... So either we get put in prison and lose the war. We give them Horik. What is that? I mean, for 10 years, we're known as a, a, a traitor. I mean, what, what sort of choice is this? If this guy takes his prisoner, we lose the war. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna go for it. We're now the traitor. I, I can't not say that. I'm sorry, but that, damn, god damn it. We were getting very lucky this episode though. So you know, we gotta, we gotta roll some, we gotta roll poorly sometimes, huh? Speaking of rolling poorly, I feel like this battle is getting a little bit away from us. So let's move out of here a little bit. Um, we could do with hiring some troops. Not a huge amount because I don't, I don't really want to spend too much money on them. Um. That'll do. Yeah, we'll, we'll take these guys. Because if this works, we can push all these claims down here as well. Plus, we've already got the mercenaries for it. So, we, we're basically guaranteed to get all of these. Just got to get this independence in the bag. Right, okay. Round two then. So, we'll lead that one. Um, you... Oh, God, you're garbage. Wait, can we put the other guy back? Where's he gone? Excuse me, come back. I suppose no one would probably want to be our commander now after what we just did to our last one, huh? Um, it'll have your, your garbage. Let's swap you out. Right, there we go. All right. So, um, we could attack this. I'm going to wait for the morale to increase a little bit. I can't believe that battlefield duel, though. That was that was so unlucky on our behalf. Mainly because he also caught in some other vassals there. I feel like us hiring the mercenaries was just kind of a necessary thing to do. Why is he not reinforcing that? You're a, you're a strange AI. You are a very strange man, AI. There we go. Nice. Okay. We're looking at 90% war score. Chase him down over here. Their movement locked over there. They're going to start with zero morale. This is fantastic. This is just battle that they've handed to us there. 94%. We might be able to win this without actually having to siege anything down, which is fantastic. So that'll speed things up quite nicely. That's exactly why, right there, is highlighted why I wanted an organizer on the center. They had to retreat into us. Because of movement lot, they didn't have a choice at that stage. That's fantastic. All right, so what are we looking at in terms of defenders? I'm just going to siege Harlan. Because looking at some of these provinces, like they've actually got a decent amount of defenders, especially on Nazo. They've got like... Over 1,500 men. Oh, sorry, over 1,300 men. So we go for this one instead. Because this will take no time at all to siege down. 300 guys. We could probably assault that. But there's no point. Not when we look at 39 percent every 12 days. Good God, man. Those are a custom model, I need to point out. Added by... They look kind of derpy up close. But we'll zoom out a little bit. But those are a custom model added by one of the guys on the workshop. Because otherwise, the model for mages are just pipemen. I still think it looks incredible. Sorry, I said workshop. It's the Elder Scrolls sub forum on the Paradox forums. All of that full model, as like I said, is below there. So uh, go and check that out. Boom. We are now independent. We are now known as a traitor, and it did cost us the loyalty of our vassals for a while, but I think it was necessary. I think I think it was really necessary. This guy wants us to be his commander now. Um, yeah, yeah, why not? Put the troops down. 
or at least put the levies down. Then we go over to you, and then we say declare war, press all claims. This is going to give us all three of her provinces. She's going to be unlanded. What we should really start doing is get, wait until we're a day away. Um, so 17th first seed. 17th first seed? Sorry? 22nd first seed. I was going to say, that's not right. Um, right, there we go. Okay, we're one day away. Declare war, press all claims. We're going to immediately land in her... Is this her capital? Where is your capital? Oh, that is your capital. Yeah, it absolutely is. Well, that's that's got her on lockdown, and she now can't raise any troops from this province. Good work. Well done. That's that's the military genius of Baron Augustus with his journeyman warrior training. Jesus Christ. All right, this one's in the bag as well. No thanks to these mercenaries. Thank God for that. I'll be going for bribing us. Now, how many months can we keep this war going for? Two months. Oh God. Um. Yeah. Um. Could take out a loan. You, you can't even borrow those loans. Borrow from money lenders. Fifty gold. Ah, I'm gonna take it. I'm gonna take it just because. I want to make sure this goes through. But bear in mind, when we get through extra provinces, gold is not going to be so much of a problem. Fights Gold has asked me to put down a dread zombie. Sure. I hope we can't lose these quests and, like, get murdered. Oh, God. We're... There was a chance we could have been murdered. Now that I know that, let's be a bit more careful with these Fights Gold quests, especially when already wounded. Maimed might have just finished us off there. That would have killed us dead, especially when we're halfway through such an important war as well. We'll probably say no to the Fighters Guild for the time being. Scrank the speed, because this is basically just a siege we're waiting to win now. But this is a war that we're just waiting to win. Excellent. Let's assault this one down, because, you know, they're mercenaries. The less there are, the less we have to pay at the end of the day. All right, you guys are done for. Are they going to raise any more troops, or have we just basically won? Is that it? 92%. She's surrendering. We surrender in these terms. Oh, ho, ho, ho. Look upon me now. Duke of Cropswood. We can't afford it. We're not going to be able to afford it for bloody ages. But hey, that's fantastic. Augustus the traitor. You won't, be, you won't be the traitor for long, my friend. People will remember you for what you succeeded at, not what you failed at at the end of the day. Good work, my friend. Outstanding county loans. We've got Battlefield Betrayal. You want me to be your steward. Absolutely. We're garbage at stewardship, but hey, we're now the steward to arguably the most powerful man in the empire. Fantastic episode all round for Baron Augustus the traitor. Started off as a garbage kid with a relatively okay education. Found his calling in war, specifically as a horseback rider there. Got himself diligent, found found his love of the faith and love of just about everything else, really. What are, what's wrong? Oh, she's pregnant. Shit. Okay, so we've got another kid on the way there. What if we ended up by seeing what? And we're also apparently training up in the Master of Strategy. That would be awesome. Another son, Augustus, is... He's Nord. He's not actually... Oh, shit. Wait, we've got... Oh, man, we've got nomination as well. That's insanely good. Oh, shit. Okay, then. Um, sure, I guess we're, we're sort of meritocracy, essentially. Struggle, and you will be named after your great father, Augustus Augustus, son. That is a powerful name if I've ever heard it. Thank you all for watching. This has been absolutely fantastic. We've essentially got ourselves more or less two duchies. We've got like 1.7 duchies going on for us now. We've got the chance of making a full-blown duchy title. We've got ourselves independence. We're a steward of the most strongest man in, or at least arguably one of the most powerful men in the empire as it stands. This has been pretty fantastic. Let's give a shout out to the patrons who made all of this possible in the first place. A big thank you to Alpha Scuff, Asuna Kirito, Atmosis, Average Gamer 419, Baking Kit and Sadini, Crazy Pack, Croesus, Donald, Fukuno Vasquez, Fluffernutter, Fungus King, Gogolus, Harik, Jimbo, Josh Lindine, Tesla, Justin Wallace, Caden Carter, Michael Mullen, Mr. Smog, Musk Ratful, Nathan Flores, Necrofilm, Pelvis Presley, Skaz, Sir Thor the Swede, Stannis Samanis, The Forsaken One, Toby Cruz, Tom Terry 18, Tyler Kendall, and Vacuous Backers. Thank you for your support, the Insane Tier Lovers on Patreon. Thank you for making the Outer Kings possible, because my god, this is a fantastic starter. That's absolutely nuts. And a thank you as well to Asaro, Adam Person, Akari, Andrew Wilson, Arachnid44, Ben Troke, Betamus Max, Better Balurian, Chris, David Van Diepen, Don, Don Connie 2 and 7, Fraser Brennan, Gabriel Faulkner, Gabriel Van Ders, Gaz, GDWK Run, Genji Circle, Grey, Haji Damar, Hancock, Icy the Great, Irish, Israel, Jay Lara, James Barnes, Jason, Jose, Yoran DeVries, John Holiday, Jordan Campbell, Joseph Beer, Justin Plock, Justin Walters, Lemon Stark, Lesme, Llewellyn Thomas, Luke Wallace, Matthew, Monty, Nathaniel Lindbergh, Nick, Noah Gallimore, Pan Samu, Pan Pearl, Peyton Denisar, Russian Oligarch, Billionaire, The Insane Pickle, Wesley Grayson, Will Wade, Wolfie, Yorkus, Zach, Pillar and Zico 2. See you guys all tomorrow for a little bit more of the, just an incredible character. Who, who needs to be a god when you've got a man who's slightly good at leading troops, huh?